Hello and welcome to another standard video. Today we're taking a look at an updated version of the Blue Black Poison Control deck. And even though it only got one new non-land card for the deck out of Duskmorn, it single-handedly changes the dynamic of the deck and pushes it over the top. And that card is the Tale of Tamio, a 3-mana legendary enchantment saga. Sagas usually aren't legendary, so this one we can only have one in play at the same time. And then the first three chapters are all the same. We mill two cards, and then have two cards that share a card type, were milled this way we get to draw another card and repeat this process and this deck only has four enchantments the rest is either lands or instants so we're definitely maximizing the potential of the tale of time yo which means we could easily end up milling six cards and drawing three cards for instance and potentially even more which means it is technically possible for us to lose the same turn we cast the tale of time yo on turn three if we just keep milling the same types over and over again mill our entire deck and then draw from an empty library not very likely to happen of course but it is possible but that showcases the potential of the tale of time you just drawing us a ton of cards while also filling the graveyard which will come in handy on chapter four because now we get to exile any number of target instant sorcery and potentially time your planeswalker cards from our graveyard we get to copy them and cast any number of the copies so we do still need to pay their mana cost but that is a way to eventually access all our poison cards and other proliferate effects out of the graveyard to help close out the game so this is the card we're building around, and it all made sense once I saw the artwork on the Tale of Tamio and Prologue, which is how we can apply that initial poison, two mana to apply poison to the opponent and to draw a card, and it only takes 10 poison counters on the opponent to win the game. And then we can also apply poison with Vraska's Fall, making the opponent sacrifice a creature or planeswalker and giving them a poison counter. We can also maybe apply a first poison using Mirax, making might tokens with Toxic. So if those hit the opponent, we also apply a poison. And then once our opponent has a poison counter, we can also proliferate it using cards like Experimental Augury, looking at the top three to put one in hand. And proliferating can also be quite synergistic with our Tale of Time, yo, as we can potentially speed up the process of getting to Chapter 4 by adding an extra lore counter to it. So that can also once again trigger an additional ability and potentially draw some more cards. And then we can also proliferate with Serum Snare if we bounce a cheap enough permanent. And then a Whisper of the Dross giving a creature minus one, minus one. Pretty well positioned in the current map full of red aggro decks and aura decks which play a lot of one ones and then also a way to proliferate so even if the opponent doesn't have a creature we can also maybe target our own might token from mirex to proliferate if we just need to apply one more poison and then the rest of the deck is a whole bunch of interaction so we can survive creature aggro decks and buy enough time to set up our Tale of Tamio to win the game. So at one mana we have the full set of cut down, as well as a Rona's Vortex, which can cheaply bounce a creature or even planeswalker, can also kick it to instead just put that creature or planeswalker on the bottom of their library instead. And then at two mana we've got the full set of Anoint with Affliction, also especially synergistic in a poison deck so we can take care of larger creatures, and also very good against the red aggro decks since we can prevent taking damage from their creatures dying and then a go for the throat still a nice answer to larger creatures in the early turns and Childress Edict also quite versatile can also make them sack a Planeswalker so between Childress Edict, Vraska's Fall and Rona's Vortex we have Planeswalkers covered and this can also be very effective against the aura strategies which rely on ward and hexproof to protect their threats and then we also have the full set of Bring the Ending as a 2-mana counter spell. And once we have Corrupted enabled, aka the opponent has 3 or more poison, this will turn into a hard counter, which is also very effective for 2-mana. And we can potentially access Bring the Ending out of our graveyard if we have our Tale of Taimyo on Chapter 3 and have a way to proliferate at instant speed, because that lets us go to Chapter 4, and then we can even replay Bring the Ending out of the graveyard at instant speed. So that's another neat interaction that we have available. And then the mana base, besides our two copies of Merex, is just a lot of blue black dual lands, Dark Slick Shores, Underground River to play early, Gloom Lake Verge, also a new addition from Duskmorn, which we can enable with our basics, as well as our two copies of Undercity Sewers, which has the basic line types. This is our only tap land in the early turns, but lots of surveil, so we can also maybe set up our next couple draws. And then lots of untapped lands, so we can cast our cheap interaction without getting run over by all the aggro decks in the format. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Missing maybe an extra removal spell. But um, yeah, I think we still keep. We've got our Tale of Time, yo. And now a second copy. Facing a red-white, maybe an aura deck. Nothing so far. Oh, we'll pass. 
No need to augury until we apply a poison first. I see virtue of loyalty, so there's a token stack. So Vraska's fall may not be at its best. Or Brask's forge, also kind of tricky to beat. Just with spot removal. So, yeah, could be in a bit of trouble here. Could still whisper to prevent one damage. I think we maybe are still better off waiting to take out one of their tokens later. So we'll take our turn. Serum Snare can bounce the forge as well. So maybe for now, Vraska's fall. Try and stem the bleeding a little bit. Before they can make a token at instant speed in response. Talent will immediately draw. Alright, so I think I'm down to go Tale of Time, you'll keep up Whisper. Mill to lane, so we get to repeat the process. Mill to instance, get to repeat the process. To instance again. Alright, that's already a lot of value. Have to discard to hand size even. What do we pick? I'm guessing a tapped lands. And then hope to draw more lands with our augury. Now we can also proliferate the Tale of Taimyo for what it's worth. Can also help hit our land drop. Could also actually cut down the 3 1 while we still can. But I'm sort of liking the proliferate plan here. They could remove their own token in response to prevent the proliferate. Which they actually do. Alright. And another Forge second main, a little awkward. Alright. Mill to instance again. Mill to instance again. Two lanes. Alright, we're going deep. That's a lot of card draw. We keep hitting. We're gonna just end up drawing our entire deck here. Alright. Well, we've got a lot of cards in hand. Play Swamp, which enables all the verges. And now it's just a matter of trying to unload as many of our spells as possible. Can Serum Snare bounce the Forge? And maybe counter it on the way back? Do we proliferate Tale of Time? I don't think I do, since I don't want to get to Chapter 4 sooner. And we've got plenty of cards as is. So, yeah, just go to our end step, discard a bunch of tapped lanes, cut down can maybe go, Shieldred's Edict is not at its best, Anoint with Affliction can go, one more, I guess Augury. Possible double tail of time use overkill. But they will eventually give us access to our author instance. So this talent hasn't been leveled up yet. So I kind of want to wait for them to level it up before we whisper. Alright, opponent doesn't. Think I'm still okay casting the Whisper, or am I? Yeah, I guess we can wait. Draw Anoint. Alright, no card draw this time, but we've got plenty of action as is. So Tale of Tamiya is legendary, so don't necessarily want to play another copy. So we'll just pass. Opponent's gonna make a knight, drawing with Caretaker's talent, unless we counter here. I think I'm okay with them making a knight. Forge triggers. Draw again. 
and I'm probably gonna start with Whisper. Opponent's gonna take out their own token, I'm sure. Yep, that happens. Now, it could actually be good for us that our opponent still has a knight in place, and next turn I can double Whisper to proliferate a bunch. And just take the hits. So, end of turn, prologue. Opponent's gonna helix in response. That's fine. And helix again. Now I might counter just to spend my mana. Alright, so time yo happens. What do we want? Prologue. Double Whisper. And a Serum Snare, perhaps. I guess Augury is better than Prologue here. And then we've got our Serum Snare, alright. So we'll start with Whisper, and the opponent scoops it up. Can proliferate twice, taking out the Knight. We can bounce the uh, Forge, proliferating again. And we get to apply another Poison Draw card, and our opponent's going to be in a lot of trouble. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got what looks like a Keeper. Tale of Time, yo, being the highlight. Opponent on a red-white Auras, potentially. So we've got a two-mana removal spell at the ready. Although we do have to watch out for Hexproof tricks as well. For now, take one damage. Unless they feel inclined to Monstrous Rage, which they do. So take five. Vraxka's Fall, also pretty clean answer to potential auras giving Hexproof until end of turn. Or ways they can protect their creatures with Ward. So we'll see if we need to Anoint here. If they just deal three damage, I may let it go. Because otherwise I may end up taking more damage if I try and Anoint and they protect it. Right, another Monstrous Rage, triggering Valiant. Yeah, I guess we'll anoint, and then if they protect, I'll take 6 damage. But then they probably won't have another creature to play, and then Vraska's Fall is a clean answer to the hero, even though I guess we'll take some damage on the way out. Sure. Let's see if they have the Hexproof Enchantment, looks like it. Shard Mage's Rescue, alright. So take 7. Now we may as well wait. Although I guess if they have another pump spell, I do get punished for waiting. But I'm still gonna wait. If they just play some aura, then we're fine. But yeah, we're gonna be pretty low. Alright, perfect. So in response to the Valiant trigger, we Vraska's fall. And even if they have a rescue. We will still only take 6 damage. Feather of Flight in response. So they do get to draw, and now we take 6. But they didn't get the extra Valiant trigger, since that was already on the stack. And then now we gotta... Hopefully keep their creatures off the board. Manifold Mouse with Offspring. I can just counter. And then we can Augury, even though I could also save it to proliferate my Saga. And then grab an Anoint. Although Mirex is also a good one here. But I think I'll have plenty of things to do with my mana once we cast our Tale of Tamio. So yeah, as long as we can draw more removal than our opponent draws creatures, we're fine.
Mill two instants, draw a card. Mill an enchantment this time. Okay, play land pass. So not in a hurry to proliferate the Tale of Time, yo. Better to build up our mana first. So we can potentially get more spells back. Milled another Tale of Time, yo, so got a bit unlucky there. Since if we mill an enchantment, we're unlikely to draw an extra card. Alright, so do I want to cast anything? So I think the plan is with Chapter 4, I can cast double Prologue and Augury. And then I would still have two mana left, which is hopefully enough. But that's three extra poison. And then Serum Snare versus Vraska's Fall. I guess the upside of Vraska's Fall is that I don't need a target to cast it. Yeah, it's probably fine. So we have three more poison in hand. Potentially four if we whisper. But this is maybe their window to get a hasty creature in play. And protect it. Another Manifold Mouse with Offspring. That's still beatable. Can cut down the real Manifold Mouse, Whisper the 1-1. One -one. Would prefer Whisper to actually resolve in case there's protection. So we'll maybe start with cut down on the 1-2 Manifold Mouse. And then if they protect, I can still Whisper the 1-1. One -one. Right, point's just going for it here, that's a little risky. But I don't mind. So Manifold Mouse down. Can whisper the 1 1, proliferate up to 7. And then let's see here. I guess I need to draw an untapped land to triple Vraska's fall. And that's just gonna be game here. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand is promising. Just need to hit our third land drop, and with sewers we can try and surveil into it. If we happen to be against a red aggro deck with Leyline, we also had Cutdown as a one mana play. Augury would be fine, but putting it in the graveyard means we can still get it back with a chapter four. And hitting our land drops more important. So planes. Double planes, so it might be a more controlling white deck. And we found a third land. Now they could have a get lost to destroy my enchantment. But we've got a backup at least. Doesn't seem like they had the enchantment removal. Opponent's playing green as well for caretaker's talent. So it is a tokens deck. Alright, so play a land and pass. We've got removal for days. A whisper, also a cheap way to proliferate. And we're drawing a lot of action. Okay. Play land and pass. Can probably ditch Anoint with Affliction times two, maybe even. And then next turn we want to get back some additional Proliferate and Poison cards. Opponent's not doing anything. Uh, could Vraska's Fall just to apply Poison doesn't seem necessary. Right, opponent's got a Leyline Binding, which I can counter, but that will limit the damage we can do with a Tale of Timeo this turn. Still seems worthwhile. And then we'll go for Augury, I guess. And that's it. Oh, 
Finding another Tale of Time is probably best. Even though Serum Snare can bounce the Talon back. This just gives us more late game. Plenty of answers to tokens. And Overlord explains why they are also playing a Leyline Binding, since Overlord can discount it down to just one mana. And the token from Overlord also works with Caretaker's Talent, so that's a pretty neat interaction. Alright, so time for Tale of Taimyo. Opponent is playing black as well. And we're just hoping they present some creatures for us to destroy. Ooh, Nissa Ascended Animus, that's a problem. Can destroy our Saga as well. Although, let's see, I guess Vraska's Fall still answers Planeswalkers. So that's still a solution. Rona's Vortex can also bounce Planeswalkers back. And our opponent's just gonna plus, so in response, Vraska's Fall. Nissa down. And then we can bounce the 8 8 token. Although they've already leveled up the talents. Could also keep it in place so I can target it with Whisper to proliferate. Although it's still going to be a while before we get to chapter 4. So, yeah, close call once again. I think I'm happy to just spend my mana here bouncing the token back. Mill four lands, draw two cards. Mill two instants, draw a card. Two more. Alright. And then just pass, planning to activate Mirex. One cut down can certainly go. And we've got another hard counter in hand now. I'm sure our opponent's got plenty of spot removal for the Might token. And now we heard migration. I probably need to counter since it's just gonna present too many threats for us to deal with. So yeah, if they've got a few more of those, we could still be in trouble. A reason to keep anoint over cut down for sure. Augury's good. Let's see if we can hit for one. Can also whisper my own token just to proliferate. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll pass it back once again. Can also use Augury to proliferate the Saga, which then gives me access to counter spells at instant speed. So that's a neat interaction. Now a creature land as well. And our opponent wants to get lost my Saga. So yeah, let's Augury in response. Proliferating the Saga, picking up a Serum Snare. And then I can even proliferate the Overlord's Time Counter if I really want to. Now we just want to proliferate a bunch. And let's see, can Serum Snare their talent as well? That looks good. So bounce talent, proliferate. And then double augury, proliferate some more. And we'll keep proliferating those time counters. I guess we're out of cards in our library, hadn't noticed. So that's a bit of a problem. We've been drawing too many cards. So I need to somehow win in my upkeep. That might prove to be challenging. Put 
Kunun does not replay the Caretaker's talent. So, yeah, I guess we make a token with Mirax and then bounce it with Serum Snare to proliferate. Opponent concedes. If they had Insta Speed Removal as their last card, they actually could have fizzled the Serum Snare so we don't proliferate. But yeah, I totally lost track of the amount of cards in our library. We just drew way too many there. But uh, yeah, I guess it worked out. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand is missing a way to apply an initial poison. So do we still want to keep? There's also no Tale of Tamio. So it is a functional hand, but not an exciting one. Take a mulligan. This is a bit better. And then can keep Sewers on one. Removal on two. Tamio on three. Opponent with a Tiny Bones. So Vraska's Fall I'm happy to keep. Opponent appears to be mono black. And a deep cavern band's gonna have a look. At least we've got multiple two mana answers, so it's not gonna be too bad. They might pick Anoint, forcing me to go for the throat if we want to pinpoint the bat. And then if they play Shieldred later, I may not have a clean answer to it. But opponent took our Tail of Time you instead. Alright, so I'm probably going to anoint the bat. Not too worried about Tiny Bones. I think I'll still take the damage for now in case their 3-drop happens to be scarier. Bandit's Talent to make me discard. Can get rid of Shielder's Edicts. And then we'll anoint back Tale of Tamio, which I don't mind casting while we can here, since that can provide some card advantage. And then we're going to want to have Raska's Fall before we keep proliferating. Alright, already draw a card. So that can try to keep up with the Bandit's Talents. Mono Black, not very likely to have a lot of enchantment removal. Although they did print a new 3-mana instance that can destroy creatures and enchantments, and they're Shieldred. Alright, so before we untap, I probably need to go for the Throat Shieldred, since that's gonna hurt otherwise. As we're already drawing extra cards. And our opponent explodes. You have the Tale of Time, you're just single-handedly beating the discard deck. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Missing our Saga. And a way to apply the first point of poison. I guess Mirex can eventually get there. So it's not a great hand, but still functional. Can cut down a 1. And we seem to be up against the red aggro. And they've got a slick shot, which, yeah, I'm happy to cut down. Dark Slick will save us a bit of damage. And there's a Tale of Time, yo. Could already get that going. Yeah, it's probably fine. Not in danger of dying out of nowhere without a Ley Line in play. And no creature. Once they have more mana, that becomes more of a problem. And we can start drawing. Okay. So we're definitely in control mode here. Just need to find our first poison card. But can also put Mirex to use. Challenger. It's gonna hit us for two. Don't think I need to respond. Would still rather hit them with Mirex first. Right, Monstrous Rage. Can see what the Valiant Trigger reveals. A Lightning Strike, which they wouldn't be able to cast. So now it's probably worth it to destroy the Challenger. Maybe hang on to Anoint to exile a creature that deals damage equal to its power when it dies. And for now, go for the Throats. 
take my turn, find another Merex. And pass a turn. So next turn we'll get access to spells in the graveyard. I'll just take one. Though it's gonna shock my face, that's fine. I'll take it. And make a token. So I can cast double prologue and then still keep two mana up in the opponent's turn. Seems fine. So we start to apply a bit of poison. And now we're happy to proliferate. Okay. So we have two more poison in hand, and then Mirax to help cross the finish line as well. And we should be able to answer the next four or five creatures they play. No blocks. Boon tries to Lightning Strike, so they are more of a burn deck than your traditional Leyline builds. And we'll probably Anoint now. And could still see a Pump Spell on the other Swiss Spear. Alright. So they still get 6 damage in, but that's probably the last 6 damage they'll deal. Cut down doesn't seem needed. Pass a turn. Swiss Spear attacks. Could bounce it, but don't mind just uh, exiling it here. And then we'll tap one Mirex. End of turn can make another token. If they make me cast another spell, we can proliferate instead. So now we've got two hard counters in hand. Pun's gonna frenzy one of them. Yeah, that's fine. I think they're pretty much mathematically dead at this point. Fear of missing out as their last card is good to counter so they don't get to draw. Make another token. So attack put you to seven. And then we can make more tokens end of turn. Alright, sweet. So yeah, the mono red matchup seems fine. Our deck is all removal, and then eventually we'll find a way to poison them. And that'll do it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got a Keeper. Facing red-white. But uh, no one-mana play. So it could be tokens as opposed to the Aura deck. Well, either way, we found our Tale of Tamio. Frasca's Fall to apply the first poison. And our opponent is on tokens. Don't have a counter spell for any of their powerful three mana plays. And yep, yeah, there's a forge. So that will resolve. No need to take out the token just yet. And we could play the Tale of Time to try and find a lane for next turn.
Opponent just makes a token, hits us for two, and sacks it to Fountain Port to draw. So they're not adding any pressure in play. Mill two lanes, draw card. Okay, so this turn we probably want to Vraska's Fall to apply that first point of poison. And if they want to sack their token in response to draw, that's fine by me. They could also make a token with Mirax and sank that instead. But opponent's gonna let it go. And play another Forge second main. Tale of Time, you mills another copy, so that's not gonna draw us anything. Okay, so play Tap Land and pass. And then we're really hoping that we find a Serum Snare at some point to bounce the Forge back. Although for now we can still cut down the 4-1 token. Take one damage. Augury end of turn. Eh, opponent is gonna sack to draw now. So we'll cast Augury, and bring the ending can go to hand, I think. Or do we prefer Verge? Our opponent still only has two poison once we proliferate, but I guess it would be able to proliferate again. Could also see the benefit of an extra land here, to be honest, since we have another Tale of Time, yo. And then I'm not going to proliferate here on my Saga. Okay, so for now, double augury. And find Whisper's the cheapest way to apply poison, but it's not guaranteed if they remove their own creature. So maybe I prefer Prologue. And now we can grab a Bring the Ending and keep that available. Okay, so we've got a bunch more poison lined up. Might need to take 7 damage here though. So we can keep up our counter spell. And then still Prologue. Opponent thinking about sacking to draw once again. That's fine. One concern is them having a uh, get lost to destroy my enchantments once I play another copy. Vortex also answers a forge token. And our opponent's gonna helix us down to six. Alright, so do we need to play an untapped land? If I want to keep up Bring the Ending can maybe double vortex the tokens. Then I could still play the Tale of Tamio here. So that's probably worth it. And now we probably want to start thinking about proliferating our saga to get to chapter 4 a little sooner. Still haven't found a Serum Snare, and we'll counter the Forge. And then double bounce the tokens. They might have a helix in hand, puts us to three. Find an augury. Alright, so Tale of Time your triggers. And then can uh, surveil here. Anoint doesn't seem needed. 
hangs a turn. Forge triggers. Can keep taking out their tokens. And then I hope to find a Serum Snare, pretty much. And with have Helix we die, but gotta go for it. And another Augury over Prolog. Proliferate the tail. Which draws Anoint. And there's a Serum Snare. Should have gone full control here to be able to respond to the trigger with another Serum Snare, potentially. But either way, I'll grab Augury. How much poison are we at? Six. Can I just win here? Poison, 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 poison. So, Prologue, Augury. Prologue. And then Prologue again would just be lethal. So that way they cannot fizzle my Serum Snare by sacrificing their own forge somehow, which could happen. So that's four more poison coming their way. Because yeah, technically they could make a token and then sack the forge to a uh, bargained torture tower, for instance, and then fizzle my Serum Snare. Bone makes a token. And yeah, that'll do it, so Tale of Taimyo claims another victim. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems functional. Can apply poison with Prologue. And then we've got plenty of removal. Against turn 1 planes, no play. Probably don't need to cut down. So it might be another token style of deck. Evangelist, I would have loved to counter, but exiling it with Anoint is still pretty effective, as they won't get an additional bank token out of it. Probably worth doing, as opposed to keeping up, bring the ending. Although we could play it extra safe, keep up a counter spell, so they don't get to resolve anything too scary. And then maybe end of turn Anoint. Uh, Caretaker's talent, I'm happy to counter. And then Vortex bounce a token. Since we were probably going to do that anyway. Now we are eventually going to run out of cards. So finding our Saga would be awesome. Exile your Evangelist. And play another one. Alright, probably gonna anoint Evangelist again. And then I could bounce the Bat token before they can sack it to Fountain Port. Proliferates. Bones at two poison. Still gonna be a long road. Enduring Innocence would have been pretty good to exile as well, so I guess we'll just counter it then. Since otherwise they still get the enchantment if I were to Vraska's Fall. Alright, we're building up our mana, so if we find our Saga, we're going to be able to leverage it quite nicely. Archangel Elspeth, we can also make them sack a Planeswalker in response to them making a token. So that actually worked out perfectly. And there's Tale of Taimyo, perfect. Now they could have removal for it in hand. And we didn't get to draw a card right away, in fact milling another Tale of Taimyo. So if they have a get lost, I'm gonna be sad. They don't, and we draw a Serum Snare. Draw a card. And now I can also proliferate the Saga at the very least.
opponent is going to try and soul partition. So, yeah, if I Serum Snare it, I guess it does get bounced before we proliferate, so I don't get to trigger the ability again. But it would be a way for us to replay it for just 3 mana as opposed to 5. If I try and bounce their token, they could sack it in response and deny the proliferate. So that doesn't seem great. Yeah, I think it's worth it. And then we still get to apply an extra poison at least. Opponent attacks. Could just take it for now. Could try and take out their token. I'll take it. If they play another Evangelist, I might prefer cutting that down. And then end of turn, I guess we'll take out the 1-1. They could sack to draw, or they can just make another fish end of turn. But it's gonna draw. And another Tale of Time is excellent. So let's draw some cards. Alright, already draw two. Might want to main phase Augury so I can hit another land drop for a turn. Whisper is also tempting since that proliferates. So we have 27 cards remaining. Yeah, I'll take the land since with another Tale of Time in hand we can use the extra mana. And then we can speed up the process of getting to chapter 4. So we're going off. 15 cards left. And yeah, our opponent scoops it up. We've got a lot of mana here and a lot of cards in Graveyard to replay. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand seems functional. Still missing a way to apply poison initially. So that's what we're looking for. Opponent on red aggro. So we've got some useful tools in hand for that matchup. We're gonna plot a demonic ruckus, so it might be an aura deck. Maybe should have actually played river in case I need to double cut down. Could happen if they play some one drop and have a protection spell left. Opponent plotting a slick shot, so they are making good use of their mana in the face of a potential counter spell or removal spell. Just gonna augur here to find a way to poison. Sewers versus Verge. Untapped land could be useful, I suppose. Alright, so we've got a lot of creatures covered. Runs out a Hardfire Hero, also good to exile with annoyance. If we get the chance. And we're gonna try and give it haste. Now I'll just cut down, keep the Anoint for later. Only take one damage. Another Augury. Alright. So finding a Vraska's Fall or a Prologue is kind of the priority here. Leyline, so they are still playing it. Could counter it, which I probably do. Can Augury first. And, yeah, still no way to apply poison. Probably just take the land, since we have removal of plenty. And then at least by hitting our land drops, we'll make uh, Tamiya's Tail more effective. So they could still run out Slick Shot and suit it up, but our opponent decides against it. Another Leyline, alright. So, they will at least get some value out of those. Serum Snare, a way to bounce it, but without a way to counter it on the way down, it's not really a great plan. But yeah, as long as they don't have any creatures in play, I guess the ley line doesn't matter too much. Manifold Mouse is a good one, since it provides two bodies. So yeah, if possible, I want to save the Serum Snare until we apply a Poison first. And then I guess I'll try to cut down the Manifold Mouse. Well, 
We'll see if they have a response. I guess I didn't think about the implications of Monstrous Rage getting their creature out of range. But Pona lets it go. And yeah, I'll be patient here. Find a Ronal's Vortex, answers the token. So it's still waiting. We've seen a good chunk of our deck without any of our poison cards. Even Mirex making uh, my token would be good. And the third Ley Line of Resonance now. So that's no joke. Manifold Mouse triggers. Can let them attack and probably gonna end up bouncing it anyway. Alright, so opponents out of creatures again. Found a prologue, perfect. I'll main phase it. In case I find a Mirex I can play, for instance. Sewer is also a good reason. And bring the ending. It's not a hard counter. I don't think it's quite what I need. If we can find our Saga, we can probably take over. Put on now running out to Slick Shots. So they are going for it with Spear as well. And a Demonic Ruckus cast from hand, so they still have the free one available. And uh, yeah, that happens. Unless we want to destroy the Swiss Spear in response so they don't get to draw from Ruckus leaving. Also makes sense. Yeah, I guess we'll go for the throats. And then now anoint. And then hopefully they're on empty. Found a Vraska's Fall, that's another poison. Hardfire Hero, I don't mind answering in response to the Valiant trigger. Mind of the Meek in response. Yeah, that's a problem. We draw them three cards, so I probably need to Serum Snare in response. But then they'll still have the Hardfire Hero next turn. But at least they're also top decking now. And we still got to apply poison with Vraska's Fall, so it's not like it fizzled. Alright, we need a good top deck. That is a good top deck. And we're off to the races, cut down the draw. Another Tale of Time, yo. Perfect. Yeah, I'm not gonna play any games, just take out the hero now. Take our one damage. Opponent found a challenger, actually one of their better top decks, as they can enable Valiant with a village. And at least a Manifold Mouse they won't be able to play. Annoying gives us another answer. And again, not gonna play any games, don't want him to cast another Might of the Meek in response to draw. And this is legendary, so I'm not gonna play the second one just yet. Bring the ending, now a hard counter. Okay, we're in control mode. And then next turn we get access to our graveyard, where we can proliferate a bunch. And another ley line. Yeah, I think we let that resolve now. We're just gonna deal with all their creatures. So I do have to keep up two mana, which means I can cast three spells. So we can augury, augury, and augury. Making sure to leave a blue mana. And our opponent explodes. Three more poison up to six. We're gonna have a full grip and even another Tale of Taimyo to completely take over. 
All right, so we get to see our Tale of Time Yo Poison deck in action, and I'm very impressed by the deck, but specifically the Tale of Time Yo, just single-handedly taking over games, drawing a ton of cards, and then also giving us access to our entire graveyard to get back all the proliferate cards to close out the game. So it almost feels tailor-made for this strategy, and uh, yeah, the deck's pretty powerful. Also relatively budget-friendly, since the Tale of Time Yo is the only actual rare spell in the deck, so you can potentially forego some of the dual lands and have a slightly more budget-friendly mana base and still make it work. So yeah, very effective in best of one. Now in best of three, things might get a little bit more tricky, since our opponents might specifically keep answers for the Tale of Time Yo, and if we want to sideboard in sweepers, for instance, those tend to be sorcery speed, so then we don't have as much synergy with our Tale of Time Yo, so we don't want to water down our synergy too much but in best of one right now this deck feels very well positioned as we can deal with all the aggro decks with our cheap removal and then even the more controlling decks like Boros Tokens don't tend to close out games fast enough to really stop the Tale of Tamiya from taking over so yeah overall very good deck right now and if you're a fan of poison or even control strategies this might be up your alley so that's going to do it for today's gameplay want to thank you for watching hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day